In today's video, we're defacing a Canadian car, so we have to decide whether or not we're going to deface the French side or the English side. Maybe I'll do both. Why? Because they make it like that. So first off, I just want to say sorry for not posting a video in quite some time. I don't want to make any excuses, but I do have two kids and one on the way. So life can get pretty hectic around here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tim and I have two kids and one on the way, like I said, and I love all things model trains. Today, we are going to be defacing this lovely Canadian national boxcar. And of course, by defacing, I mean graffiti and weathering. It's one of my favorite things to do in the hobby and we're gonna get started right now. Like I said earlier, it's been a long time since I've put out a video and I do apologize for that. This is something that I really would like to be doing more consistently. It's kind of difficult sometimes, if I'm being completely honest with you, it's kind of difficult to find the motivation in the summertime to do model trains because a lot of times model trains is considered to be a winter hobby. And in Canada, where I am, we only get about, I wanna say 25 minutes of summertime. So I like to capitalize on that as best as I can. Um, I like to go places with my family. I like to spend time outside barbecuing and just being outside, just enjoying the sunshine because in about 25 minutes, like I said, we're gonna be shoveling the driveway. We're gonna be turning off the AC, turning on the heater. So in the summertime, I do still have my hobbies. I love remote control trucks. My son has really gotten into remote control trucks as well. Um, he got given just a little toy remote control truck not that long ago. And now all he wants to talk about is, daddy, can you make your remote control trucks go? And I've, okay, well, why not? <laughs> Twist my arm, why don't you? So I've been doing a lot of that recently. And if that's something that you're also interested in, feel free to drop a comment and let me know because if you want to see remote control truck content as well, let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to make it. But back to trains. I have here a Canadian National boxcar. This, I believe, is a Walther's. I don't have the original box for it anymore. But nonetheless, it's time to give it a facelift. So let's just dive in. Like I've done before, I like to give my cars a quick pencil outline just to sketch in how things are gonna look. I don't use decals when I do graffiti just because I love the authenticity of actual paint on actual train cars. And if you're saying, oh, well, I'm not a very good artist. Well, there are graffiti artists out there who are not very good artists as well. So maybe you're mimicking them. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing a box car like this, where I have the door in the center, I try to avoid the actual door. Um, it's not because people don't graffiti doors or anything like that, but because when you're painting on the door, it's sometimes hard to get the detail that you want because of all the ribs and the latches and things like that. Sometimes your pencil can knock one of the latches and break it off and that's just not fun. So I tend to stick to one side or the other. However, with this car, I noticed there's not as much detail on the door piece itself. So. I'm gonna fight my way through and try and center this graffiti to make one big tag across the center of the car. So I've finished the pencil outline and I'm happy with how it's looking. It's now time for me to go into the base layer. What I wanna do is give myself a layer to work off of that's different from the background of the box car. That way I can go in with different colors on top of that and really make it pop off of the car. So I got these metallic pens they're kind of like a marker they they feel kind of like a paint marker but they're not paint they're actually a marker they're water-based odorless they're all got all kinds of things that they don't have in it you know when they list all the things that are not in the pen they didn't kill any animals to make this and all that kind of stuff i don't know all i do know is that it's metallic and that it looks super cool on plastic so i will try to find these and i'll link them in the description if i do even as just a base coat they go on super smooth okay so that is the base color for this car all right, so now I'm gonna go in with an ultra fine Sharpie pen. Just outline everything that I've already drawn and put in some shading here and there where I see fit. Now these pens are great. I get them at the dollar store. You can pretty much get them anywhere where you can buy pens and pencils. Now the only thing about these, these pens is that they're not really intended to be drawing on plastic and on, on paint and, th and stuff like that. 
so they do dry out a lot faster. I tend to keep a good handful of them in my toolbox at all times because sometimes I'll need more than one to do one car. <laughs> it's That's just the cost of doing business, I guess. I have used ultra fine paint markers as well, but the one that I have right now explodes quite a bit and I just don't trust it working on cars right now. I've had it a couple of times where I'm just doing a really nice line, I'm getting it just, just how I want it, and then it explodes everywhere, and I have black paint all over the whole car, and I have to wipe it off and fix what I need to fix, and it's not fun. This one's dead already. At the time of recording this, I have 359 subscribers. Wonder, wonder if we can wonder if we can hit 400. I make videos about model trains and one of my favorite things to do is weathering and graffiti. So if that's something that you're interested in, feel free to subscribe to this channel and click that bell so that you're notified every single time I post a video. I gotta post more consistently. I'm gonna need you guys to hold me accountable. If you haven't seen me post in a while, and you're looking for content from me, drop a comment down below and just wake me up. Just be like, hey Tim, make another video. Model trains is an insanely cool hobby in my opinion. If not for the trains themselves, for the actual art that's behind it all. Everybody has their own voice when it comes to model trains and everybody has their own style. And I think that that is so cool. I've been going to train shows for 10 years now and just seeing how everybody does things a little bit differently. I really wanna share my voice. I wanna share what it is that I do and how I do it differently from everybody else. And if you learn something from me, that's great. And if you have something to teach me, even better. I, I just want to expand the community of model railroading, especially since the pandemic and we haven't been able to get to train shows. With the advancement of online everything is online now i mean you you see people like jimmy from the diy and digital doing his virtual model train shows i think that is the coolest thing i love the the expanding of the community of model railroading and i'm so excited to be a part of it i'm liking how this is starting to look one of the best ways to get shading is to just pick a direction in this instance i have my light source coming from the top right. If I've got light coming from here, then it's gonna cast a shadow on the opposite side of that. So anything on this edge of the letter is gonna get a harder shadow. And then anything on the very top edge from this direction is gonna get a highlight. So I'm using black as my shadow color, and then I'm gonna come in here with something like a green. But yeah, like I said, I'm going in with a darker color with my black on the opposite side of my light source to give it that shadow. And once that's all done, I'll show you what I'm gonna do for my highlight color. So you can really see that that's really starting to pop. So even up here where the G comes around, I'm gonna put a bit of a shadow here just to show that the the letter is overlapping itself. All right, we have an outline and we have shadows and we have some graffiti. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're going for, right? So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a highlight at the top, like I said. Graffiti is meant to be quick. It's meant to be get it done and move on kind of a vibe where you just, you gotta get it done before you get caught. <laughs> And then what I'm also going to do is maybe take this other green, put some flare in a few spots. It's looking like something. So we got a metallic look. We're going to give some like panel lines so it looks almost machine like. I, I'm really liking how this looks. Um, I do want to fill in a bit of a background though. I just need to find the right color. I have this light purple. How does this look? Only one way to find out. Okay, we're doing this. And then what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna take a gold metallic to give it a little bit of an outline. An outline of the background. This is all an experiment in all honesty. A lot of times what I do is I just work at it until I'm happy with it. And then some of those techniques I'll adopt and use in another project. And some of those techniques I will never talk about ever again because they were terrible and they ruined a car. Generally, I try to experiment on my own stuff <laughs> because I don't want to deal with sad people. 
But uh, yeah, that is looking like a car that says go home, which is foreshadowing. But I'm just gonna leave it right there for now. I am going to weather this car. I'm just not going to do it today, but I promise you, you will see the finished product. So if this video was entertaining or educational for you, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified every single time I post a video. I never know how to end these things, so I'm just gonna say goodbye. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.